Welcome back. Once again, I'm Josh Vandery on Ansible for Network Automation. Today, we're talking about Ansible Vault and Loops. So let's take a look at what we're going to do in our overview today. We're going to know how to get started with Ansible Vault. We're going to take a look at reusing tasks using include tasks. And then we're going to know how to leverage loops in your playbooks with the loop variable. Before we get going on our demo heavy session here today, I do want you to take a look at the docs page for linked here. Ansible's changing the way they handle loops. We're going to cover the new methodology with the loops key value. And then before you might have seen with items or with underscore anything. These are really changing into the new loop structure. So I do encourage you to take a look. If you do find some old playbooks that have with underscore items or with underscore anything else, there's actually a porting guide there as well. So you can know how to move on over. So in our demo today, we're going to take a look at Ansible Vault. We're going to take a look at including tasks and working through loops. Let's dig right into our Ansible Vault. Ansible Vault is very handy for us to be able to use to be able to maintain some secret information and still be able to use it in our playbooks. Previously, we saw our username and password was in the clear text on the inventory file. That's not a very good practice for us to do. So let's take a look at what Ansible provides using Ansible-Vault. That is the name of the executable that runs to be able to do your creation of files, your editing of files, et cetera, and to view them. So when we do Ansible Vault, the first thing we have to do is what are we going to do? Are we going to create or are we going to edit? And here we're going to create and we're going to create a YAML file with some secret information in it. So we'll go ahead and do that. It's going to prompt you for what is the password you'd like to use. So I'm going to set something here and it's going to reconfirm like any good practice. It takes you then to this VI console. You can also set that to nano. Take a look at Google on how to set that if you wish to set that. But I do like to use VI lately. So we're going to go ahead and start it off like any good YAML file with the three dashes on top. And then we're going to go Ansible underscore user and set Cisco and password set that to Cisco as well so then we're going to go ahead and write and quit that now when we take a look at that file we're going to try to just do a cat on that file we see that's vault encrypted so that's going to be very helpful this could get put into source control and it's not going to be of any value there's no text there so we'll go ahead and if we want to edit that file we'll do ansible vault edit and then the file secret info again and this time it's going to prompt you for your vault password. So going in, it has that information all set for you. That we've got the vault file created. And what do we do with it? Well, we've got our first playbook that we're going to go ahead and take a look at. We're going to demo vault and loops. And this also includes the include vars. So it's really demo vault and include vars. So our playbook here, it's a single play. We're going to have a task. We're going to go ahead and open the vault files. This is include vars, file, secret info, and we're delegating this to a local host. This is important because we actually are going to configure something here. We're going to configure the name servers on the lab devices we have. Here we've got the connection set to network underscore CLI. If we didn't have this set to local host before, on that particular task, Ansible will try to connect to the router and it will fail because it has no credentials in it. Task two, this is kind of the include vars piece that we want to cover. Here we've got a task two, we're importing a second set of credentials. We're including tasks. There's another one that we'll take a look at right away here. Files, set name, servers, uh, YAML. So we'll take a look at that. So in the set name servers, at the very top here, this is our most intense loop. I want to give you both the simplified and the intense methodology to make sure you've seen both ways. They basically both do the same thing. And we'll take a look at the difference and what that looks like here shortly. But task three, we have set name servers iOS config lines IP name server and here we've got a new thing name underscore server dot IP underscore address so basically what we're doing here is on the loop section we've got three pieces that we're looping over it's a list of items the first thing is a name is quad 9 Google DNS Cloudflare DNS really we're setting the name just to be used as a label that we'll see here in a short bit it looks a little bit nicer for what it displays then we have the second part of the list item there of IP underscore address there we've got 99 for Quad9, 8888 for Google, and 1111 for Cloudflare. And then in our loop control, first we assign a label, so that's going to make it look nice. We'll take a look, see what that looks like. We're also going to put a pause here, so we can go ahead and wait a couple seconds if we need to slow down and we want to see something. Just want to put that out there. And then we have a loop underscore var. This is what we're going to use to actually name the variable. So that's how we on the lines we show name underscore 
server there. Compare that to task four on this, how we have IP name dash server in item. So if you don't have a loop var, by default, Ansible uses items, at least in this particular case. And this is where on the slides we were talking about how there was with underscore items. Ansible has really gained away from that and given you the capability to have the loop control. So task four is stripped down. We don't have the name to, to take along with our label. And then we're just looping over the addresses. And there we're going to see some item potency, which is a topic we'll cover a little bit later, that the second set of tasks doesn't do anything. All right, let's go ahead and run our playbook here. Okay, we've now seen what happens when you don't supply a password to the playbook. You'll see that it fails because it was unable to open the files because there were no vault secrets found. So let's go ahead and run this playbook the proper way. It includes having a dash dash ask vault pass. And then it's going to prompt you for your password. So as it goes through here, it's opening up the vault file. Those are green. It was successful. And then it imports this next set of tasks. Here we see that these items are being changed. So we are in fact making changes to the DNS servers on the routers. And then when we do the second run, we'll see that we've got the individual items running. And there you have the individual IP addresses being assigned to the name servers. Whereas on task three above, you see that there's a nice name there of Cloudflare DNS or Google DNS or Quad9. That's where the loop control of a label comes in handy. We've now taken a look at what Ansible Vault can do for us, how to separate your tasks into other files, so that way they can be reused by multiple playbooks, and then how to include the files and the other tasks plays that you can see. One may ask, okay, you still have to put your password in and execute this. Well, a little bit later, you'll be able to start to take a look at some other engines such as Ansible's AWX or Tower, or perhaps a Jenkins that can actually inject the password in when, and do the ask vault password and handle that for you. And that is where using the vault has become very powerful and what really took my game forward as far as working with Ansible playbooks. So reviewing what we've looked at today, we've taken a look at the use of Ansible Vault, how you can create credentials and store them securely without having to put passwords clear text. Not a good practice in general. We covered how to not repeat your tasks using include underscore tasks. And then we reviewed how loops work with Ansible, both their very verbose methodology and their minimal required pieces. So